Danny Flexen. Welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Reflections. We're here every Monday, 4.30pm, to talk about usually the boxing action of the weekend just gone. And although um, I watched the <coughs> excuse me, Sky Sports show on Saturday night, which saw uh, Joshua Boazzi return from a long time out to get a pretty dominant win over an overmatched opponent in Daniel Dos Santos, and also a bit of a Cinderella story on the undercard as Jason Cunningham upset the odds to take the European Super Bantamweight title from Gamal Yafai. That was all overshadowed, rather, by Tyson Fury's announcement the very next day, um, confirming, finally, that the fight between himself and Anthony Joshua for all the major world heavyweight titles is on um, for August the 14th in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. As has long been predicted, rumoured and indeed uh, almost confirmed by promoter or one of the promoters, Eddie Hearn. But we were all waiting for Tyson Fury to sign the contract. He still hasn't, as far as I know. Um, but he does seem keen to now after getting off the phone with Prince Khalid of Saudi Arabia, who reassured the Gypsy King that the funds were in place to guarantee um, the purse that has been contracted. And that was the... Reason for the hold-up, um, certainly according to Frank Warren, who I spoke to last week, um, he said that Fury was waiting for his purse to be guaranteed by a bank. He wanted to be reassured, having not worked um, with the, the backers before, although Hearn and AJ obviously have for um, Joshua's rematch victory over Andy Ruiz um, in the region. So Fury wanted that reassurance, and now he has it, direct from Saudi royalty. Um so he seems fairly happy now to confirm to his, you know, huge number of followers on social media that the fight is on. He can't wait to smash AJ, is what he said. August 14th, Saudi Arabia. Now, a number of things come to mind about this, but the one that people don't seem to be talking about as much as they probably should, and one that I mentioned on Twitter last week, and not many people responded, strangely, is that the Olympics finish on August the 7th. Now, that was believed to be a bit of a sticking point earlier in negotiations for the date because AJ's head trainer, Robert McCracken, is also the performance director for the Great Britain amateur team or squad. Um, and he will be obviously taking them to Tokyo for the Olympics, which now look likely to go ahead as planned. Well, not as planned because it's a year late, but as planned for 2021. Um, so the issue is not whether McCracken can be in the corner because the fight being confirmed for the 14th of August, a week after the Olympics comes to its conclusion, hopefully with Team GB boasting a huge um, collection of medals, particularly of the gold variety. Um, there's no issue with him being in the corner because it's a week later. Um, but what happens in the latter stages or the second half, if you like, of Anthony Joshua's camp? He's been training for ages already, um, mainly at his old amateur gym, Finchley ABC. But he usually, for the last either 8, 10 or 12 weeks um, leading up to a fight, joins Rob McCracken and team, um, which not just includes assistant trainers, who we'll come to in a minute, but nutritionist, strength and conditioning coach, and so on and so forth, at the uh, world-class English Institute of Sport up in Sheffield. And that's where he does the bulk, usually, of his preparations. Now, if McCracken is with the amateur squad in Japan for how long did the Olympics last? Four weeks longer for that period. Then AJ may well start his camp for the Fury fight in Sheffield, but he won't be able to, well, he can finish it in Sheffield, but not with Robert McCracken by his side. And most of the GB um, people, so Mark Ellison, the nutritionist, for example, some of the SNC coaches, some of the assistant coaches who've worked with AJ, the likes of Lee Pullen and so on, they will all presumably be in Tokyo with McCracken and the squad. So what does Joshua do? It's the biggest and most important fight of his life, certainly. Um, he's avenged his only previous defeat. So this is huge, huge fight for him for all the marbles against his greatest rival, both domestically and on the world scene. Um, biggest money fight in history. They're both set to make 100. Sorry, the, the site fee is 155 million. 5 million of that for reportedly undercard and expenses the other the rest to be split equally between the two fighters 75 million each not not bad if you can get it um but yeah so all those things at stake probably the biggest money generating fight in british history can't see it not being you know it's on near prime time british uh, time because of our you know close um connections to the time zone in that region 
Um, might be difficult to sell it as a pay-per-view in the US, but we believe the zone will be carrying it um, outside the US and the UK. It might be on ESPN Plus pay-per-view. Sorry, not ESPN Plus, ESPN pay-per-view in the US. If that's the case, then might be a tough sell because it'll be in the morning um, American time. But I'm getting sidetracked. The point is that it's a hugely important fight and Joshua could be without his long-term head trainer who also coached him in his amateur days um, on the Olympic squad when he won that gold medal, of course, in 2012, could be without him for at least four weeks, maybe longer, of camp. Um, and towards the latter end of camp, so when the majority of sparring is done, um, when things can happen, injuries could occur, uh, when the real sharpening process becomes, when it's not about getting your body in condition, but it's more about tactics and polishing and re repetition of techniques and moves that you're planning to use in the fight itself. And McCracken, who's a diligent strategist and technical um, operator, will be absent for all of this. Unless, you know, Joshua decided to go out to Tokyo and grab some time with McCracken when he could between sessions with the Olympic fighters. But I can't see that happening with having to kind of readjust to the time zone, then come back, then go to Saudi Arabia. Just doesn't seem likely. What could be um, more on the cards is that just before the Andy Ruiz rematch, um, Joshua made some changes to his team, brought a couple of assistant trainers into the fold to uh, work alongside Robert McCracken. He's still the head coach, of course. Um, and they were Joby Clayton, the head coach of Fireside ABC, who worked closely with Ben Whitaker, um, who's a big favourite for a medal at the Tokyo Olympics, light heavyweight. And you can see an interview with him on our channel today. That's gone up. Very good by Joe Lee. Um, and also An Angel Fernandez, who's worked previously with Isaac Chamberlain, O'Hara Davies and others. Um, and has a real kind of emphasis on movement and ring IQ and agility, um, it's fair to say. And so Joshua brought those guys in to, to help add some more layers to his game. Um, obviously worked very well as he adapted to win the Ruiz rematch and has looked good since. I guess um, they would then run that part of Joshua's training camp from whenever he, uh, whenever Rob McCracken jets off to Tokyo um, to a week before the fight itself. And you would expect McCracken to rejoin during fight week and be in the corner on fight night. Um, but it is a worry um, if, I, if I was AJ's camp. You know, Rob McCracken's someone who's been with him, as I say, for the majority of his pro career. He guided him to that gold medal as part of the GB squad. Um, and Joshua, even after people talked about a change of head trainer after the Ruiz defeat, the shock defeat out in New York, Joshua remained steadfast and loyal to McCracken because he obviously values their relationship and has a lot of trust in him. Now, that trust will still be present in the corner on the night. But in the really crucial four to five weeks leading up to that big night, McCracken won't be there and he will have to rely on people that he obviously um, values in uh, Joby Clayton and Hel Fernandez. He wouldn't have brought them into the camp otherwise and retained them since. Um, but does he have that same level of trust and understanding um, as he does with McCracken? Because McCracken, having worked with Joshua for so long and so intensely, so intimately, will understand when... He needs a break, you know, when he needs to tailor down his training a bit because he's he's over he's tired or he's overworked. He'll understand when he needs to push it more. He'll understand when to push him hard and when to relax a little bit and put an arm around the shoulder. These are things that get built up over years and years of being with the same coach. And Joshua obviously values that because he's retained McCracken for so long. How is that going to affect him going into this fight? You know, you've got Tyson Fury, already incredibly difficult fighter to beat, awkward, long powerful, st physically strong, able to adapt. And he's not been with his trainer, Sugar Hill, um, for very long. Sugar Hill Stewart, of course, who guided him to that more aggressive style, as we saw against Deontay Wilder in their rematch. Um, and, and has been inactive for since then as well, which doesn't help him. Um, and they haven't been together that long, but they, this, is, this will be their second major fight together as head trainer and fighter. And Fury's already been training he's already kind of getting the, the rounds and he might not look in fabulous condition but he has been staying as sharp as he can without that competitive action um and I just think Fury's someone who's 
had a lot of different trainers already in his career, a lot of different corner men. I wouldn't want to list them all. But he obviously, you know, he started off with his uncle Huey Fury. He's been with his other uncle, Peter Fury. Um, he's worked with various trainers. Ben Davison obviously springs to mind. Um, Tony Sims, as you'll see on our channel, was in the corner for the uh, first fight with John McDermott early in Fury's career. So he's someone who's worked with a lot of different trainers. He's worked with Emmanuel Stewart, of course, before it should be healed, the, the dear departed legend, Emmanuel Stewart. Um, and other trainers, he's bounced around even when he's not preparing for a specific fight. And he's got that kind of natural fighting ability where he can adapt to a new trainer and really kind of knows what he's doing anyway. He doesn't need to change tactics that much because he's got the ability to do that on the fly mid-fight. Not sure AJ has to the same extent. And AJ hasn't bounced around as many different trainers as often as Fury either. So he's not really accustomed to it. I think that could be a major factor on fight night. I think Fury, uh, I think AJ maybe needs that presence in the corner, um, that that uh, familiar, specifically presence in the corner, a bit more than Fury does. And in a fight where a lot of people consider it a 50-50 and it's fine margins and, you know, it's whoever's got, whoever turns up on the night is the one favoured to win. This could be an incredibly crucial factor. And as I said, one that I don't think people are talking about anywhere near enough. So I want to hear what you guys think about it. How crucial a factor is McCracken's uh, likely absence from around four weeks, maybe more, of Joshua's camp? Or am I wrong? Is there any chance Joshua goes out to Japan and grabs some time with uh, McCracken? Or do you feel uh, Joby Clayton and uh, Angel Fernandez, maybe other people could come in as well? That will be enough to get Joshua into peak condition, both physically, mentally, emotionally, strategically, for the Fury fight, which is a huge challenge. Let me know what you think. I'll respond to some of the comments. Meanwhile, I'll be back on Thursday for Flexpectations, where I'll be looking ahead to the another Undisputed Clash. This one, uh, this Saturday, super lightweight between Josh Taylor and Jose Ramirez. And then I'll be back the following Monday for the next Reflections, which will be more of a traditional one where we'll look back on the Taylor Ramirez fight. And that'll be Monday, 4.30pm also. Really appreciate your time as always, and I'll see you all soon. Cheers. Thank you.